Um, so uh, what are you going to get out of this session? So we're going to cover a little bit of sort of learnings from uh, standing up uh, SAP Cloud Platform on Azure um, and, and using that as a case study for, for multi-cloud. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm just going to give sort of a brief overview of what Cloud Foundry and Azure means and kind of what the, the scope of it is. Um, and then talk a little bit about sort of how you can get involved and, and um, participate in this journey that we're on. Uh, so what is Cloud Foundry on Azure? So this question comes up a lot because there's uh, apparently still a lot of people that believe that Azure is sort of just the Windows cloud. Um, you know, it's only for doing, building .NET applications with Visual Studio targeting Windows um, to run on Azure. And so people go like, Cloud Foundry? That doesn't seem like it would align very well. Um, Azure has changed. Uh, Microsoft has changed significantly, and Azure has been sort of at the bleeding edge of that. Um, We've actually been working with uh, the Cloud Foundry community um, and with a number of partners uh, for about three years now to bring uh, Cloud Foundry to uh, Azure in a number of different forms. Um, so we have the fully open source version um, that you can run on top of um, the Azure infrastructure. Uh, you can deploy the Pivotal Cloud Foundry uh, in a sort of single tenant version inside of your Azure subscription um, from the Azure Marketplace. Um, or as we'll be talking about today, you can use the fully hosted uh, multi-tenant uh, service from SAP. Um, and as a result of all that work that we've been doing and the partnerships um, that, that we've been working on, we actually announced at the Cloud Foundry Summit in Silicon Valley in June that Microsoft had joined the Cloud Foundry Foundation. So really putting a bow on um, the, all the work that we've done um, with Cloud Foundry. And the reason for it is ultimately that we want Azure to be the most open cloud. Um, and so we want to make sure that you know, any operating system you want to uh, target, any framework or tool chain you want to use, um, any platform you want to use, including things like Cloud Foundry, that you you get really a, a best-in-class experience um, on top of Azure, and so that's why we really put a lot of um, resources uh, into that work. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, call on Dimitri to talk a little bit about what SAP uh, thinks about in terms of uh, multi-cloud and give a little bit of background on the cloud platform. Thank you, John, for the introduction. Okay, so as you know, the cloud uh, comp Say okay? Okay. <laughs> As you know, the cloud computing today is an often preferable direction for running software. And as its usage grows, the idea of multi-cloud is gaining more adoption and spread. People are asking me if I could explain a little bit what is the mention of multi-cloud and why it would be important to them. So because uh, multi-cloud uh, have a very broad definition and uh, it's a response to um, a different uh, uh, topics uh, of uh, cloud architecture and response to modern businesses and developer needs, it's better to explain it with uh, examples. For enterprise, a multi-cloud, it could be a strategy that allows an enterprise to run their software where they best fit by using several cloud providers as one single solution. It allows the enterprise to meet a specific application uh, uh, requirements or a specific uh, workload uh, by uh, consuming uh, multiple uh, cloud providers and uh, while sorry, ju just as long as uh, each uh, provider can fulfill enterprise uh, specific needs at a given time. Another example, IT specialist uh, may find a multi-cloud as a solution for reducing uh, the risk of uh, downtime or widespread data loss uh, caused by uh, localized component uh, failure. And of course, uh, and surely the developers uh, may uh, use uh, multi-cloud as an enabler to consume unique innovation technologies from uh, different cloud providers to build great apps. So let's do a very brief overview of the SAP Cloud Platform to understand what is the role of the multi-cloud and the Cloud Foundry for SAP. SAP Cloud Platform is an enterprise platform as a service that offers you the flexibility to use the leading cloud providers. So while you may select infrastructure powered by Amazon, which is available in uh, general availability, uh, you can also select the uh, Google Cloud Platform and the uh, Microsoft Azure uh, as an additional infrastructure and uh, those uh, uh, cloud providers available as a public beta. 
regardless of which cloud providers you choose, all multi-cloud application deployments can be centrally managed and operated in one single unified cockpit. Use of adoption is very important to us. So SAP takes care of the complexity of managing and operating the underlying infrastructure accounts. So you can quickly move the applications to the infrastructure uh, that best meets your uh, requirements with a limited effort. If for some reason the application needed uh, to go to another infrastructure, uh, you can easily deploy your application to SAP Cloud Classroom host on another uh, infrastructure. And uh, to recap, uh, uh, for SAP Cloud Foundry uh, plays a central role in the platform as a service strategy. Offering the Cloud Foundry environment helps uh, grow SAP Cloud Platform commitment to open standards and open source technologies and provides more options to developers to utilize the richness of our platform. So Cloud Foundry allows SAP and SAP customers to use uh, popular programming language but also to deploy applications on top of popular IS platform, hence no vendor uh, lock-in. Okay, thanks, and uh, now Sean will talk about uh, Cloud Foundry on Azure. All right, thanks, Dimitri. Hey, it's me, I'm back. Um, so, uh, I talked a little bit about Cloud Foundry on Azure sort of conceptually, you know, a little bit uh, deeper, although not, not too much deeper. Um, for those who are familiar with Cloud Foundry, this picture will be, um, fairly uh, familiar to you. Um, if you're new, uh, just to give you kind of a sense of how it works, um, we've got the, the base Azure infrastructure kind of at the, at the bottom layer. Um, that is uh, deployed using um, the, the cloud provider interface plugin that we provide, so the Azure CPI um, for Bosch. Once you have that Cloud Foundry environment deployed, then you're deploying your applications onto um, Cloud Foundry, and you don't, actually don't really need to worry about the fact that you're running on, on Azure. You're just using cloud, cloud Foundry, and that's sort of where this whole sort of multi-cloud um, abstraction comes in. Um, that's to sort of run your, your stateless applications. If you want to take advantage of some of the Azure backing services for, um, for storing some of your state, that's where the, the Service Broker API comes in, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but we've built the Azure Service Broker API as a way to connect out to um, Azure platform services, so some of our more popular services like um, Azure SQL, um, Azure Cosmos DB, Storage, um, and our uh, recently announced uh, MySQL and Postgres uh, databases as a service. Look at that transition. Um, so the session is entitled Making It Real, so I think to make it real we have to get out of PowerPoint just for a brief, brief second. Um, and I want to just kind of give a sense of um, how this looks in practice. So I mentioned the, the cloud provider interface that we, uh, that we build. This is um, developed by Microsoft full-time uh, engineers. We do it fully in, in the open um, on GitHub. Uh, so this is the project that we've been working on for, uh, again, roughly the last two and a half or three years. Um, have done, uh, as you can see, 27 uh, releases and continuing to add more functionality, integrate with um, new features that come out in Azure. So as we announced um, our uh, managed disks offering, for example, we added support for that in the CPI. Uh, we re recently integrated it with the Azure Application Gateway, which is our Layer 7 load balancer. Um, and so if you go in here, uh, if you wanted to deploy um, Cloud Foundry, um, sort of the fully open source version, you could start from here, jump over into um, the Bosch documentation to set up your Azure environment. Um, and actually the easiest uh, way to, to get this bootstrapped is um, if you go here into um, the Azure Quick Start templates in, in GitHub linked there from, from the Bosch documentation. Um, this actually provides the Azure Resource Manager template that's required to stand up the, the Jumpbox VM, all the virtual network and, and storage resources that you need um, to be able to deploy your uh, Cloud Foundry environment. And the nice thing is you can go right from here um, to uh, the Azure portal. Um, and basically fill in just the necessary properties uh, to, to stand up that environment. So this makes it pretty easy to, uh, to get an initial um, Cloud Foundry environment set up on Azure. You'll see you fill in 
um, some of the details you need here, and you'll notice um, that there is an option to, this will set up initially just sort of a jump box on a virtual network um, in Azure that you can use as your sort of your entry point to your Cloud Foundry environment, and you can actually set it up to uh, also deploy the Bosch director, so to, to get you uh, up and running. And once you do that, you will get a VM that looks like this, um, where um, you'll get a, a set of resources um, and scripts and, and Bosch manifests that you can actually use to uh, deploy Cloud Foundry. So like under manifests, there are um, options for deploying a, a single VM, multiple VMs. Um, this makes it uh, relatively easy to, to get started with um, running the fully open source um, Cloud Foundry on Azure. Now, that being said, there's still a certain amount of work here uh, to bootstrap this environment. Um, And so that's where uh, using something like the SAP Cloud Platform comes in um, to allow you to get started even easier um, with a fully hosted service. So I'll turn it back over to uh, Dimitri to talk a little bit about the, the technical details of the Cloud Platform. Please don't worry if you find this picture slightly complicated. I'm not going to talk about uh, Cloud Foundry architecture about Cloud Foundry architecture, about all the services and all the components you can see there. Actually, my story is about uh, how we made the multi-cloud to become a reality for SAP Cloud Platform on the case of Microsoft Azure. So in the beginning, uh, we just started with a blueprint like that. And uh, then after a few months, uh, we have finished with the successful integration of Microsoft Azure into infrastructure providers family available on SAP Cloud Platform. So first of all, I want to share the general impression from our work with Microsoft Azure. When we started our exploration of Azure capabilities, we discovered Azure as a stable and mature IS. The what features and functionality required for our platform were already there from day one. For example, things like a wide offering of the VM and the hardware types and series. For us, it was important because every component uh, that you can see there is, uh, consumes a specific amount of resources. Hence, our role is to find the optimal match between the component needs and the provided IS resources. And of course, we have found uh, a ready to use uh, the Terraform and the Bosch CPI for Azure. Such readiness allows us to do a rapid delivery of SAP Cloud Platform and uh, SAP Cloud Foundry on top of Microsoft Azure. You can find that the uh, Cloud Foundry on the diagram is uh, one of the pillars in the overall SAP Cloud Platform architecture. It's consisting of uh, multiple components uh, communicating with each other. Uh, I want to put your attention that in order to run it on top of Azure, we have collected uh, all the requirements needed for the Cloud Foundry environment and uh, also for uh, all the SAP services uh, and then found the relevant uh, counterparts provided by uh, Azure. For us, it's uh, uh, fundamental to consume all these resources using the Terraform and the uh, Bosch CPIs. Uh, my colleagues work closely with the uh, Microsoft team to enhance Bosch CPI and to address essential functionality needed for SAP Cloud Platform on Microsoft Azure. And uh, also, last but not least, in the big data area that you can see there, uh, we are working together with Microsoft to certify HANA machines for general availability. So I think it's a good moment uh, to show a small demo of uh, SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, you can uh, scan this uh, QR code uh, to go into the, our uh, Cloud uh, Platform cockpit. And uh, actually, let's uh, go into it. So actually, this is in, uh, in our cockpit. Uh, because uh, our uh, demo is uh, uh, limited uh, in time, we have a very strict uh, time uh, limit, so I will skip the registration process for you, and uh, we'll go directly to the detail. So after the registration, you can uh, 
get into this uh, dashboard where you as a developer can can uh, use a Cloud Foundry environment for deploying your applications. And uh, for example, you can see that uh, we are providing uh, several uh, cloud uh, providers uh, in the different uh, re regions. And uh, for this demo especially, I uh, created a project, uh, demo project uh, on uh, top of uh, uh, Microsoft Azure using the uh, Azure infrastructures. So after I created uh, my account and uh, created the project, uh, you can uh, get into the account uh, overview of where you can find all the relevant information uh, like uh, what is the name of the organization, which uh, quota and which services you have, uh, the API endpoint. And uh, if, you, if you go deeper into the menus, you can reach the marketplace where you can find the common backend layer services that we are providing and other services like uh, the application logs, the HANA trial. Uh, under common backend layer services, I mean the PostgreSQL, the RabbitMQ, Redis, uh, and uh, other uh, databases. So, for example, my application consumes uh, the Postgres database. So I created an instance of the database and deployed the application. And uh, also, after I did the deployment, I did a binding of the Postgres uh, service to my application. So, for example, after you do the binding uh, using the dashboard, you can also go to the uh, database or service-specific uh, dashboards, for example, if I'm clicking here, you can see that it's uh, all the details, all the properties, uh, the application logs. And uh, you are, if you are familiar with the terminal and uh, you prefer to operate with Cloud Foundry using the Cloud Foundry CLI, so for example, you can uh, target uh, an environment uh, at uh, API endpoint, and for example, sorry, can get the application and uh, I can see the services. So for example, if I open the application, so it's uh, just a very small application uh, that uh, uh, should uh, demonstrate the basic uh, functionality of SAP Cloud Platform. So let's see what happened under the hood. How was this uh, done on the uh, Azure? So briefly on this uh, side, uh, you can see how we are doing of the deployment of the Cloud Foundry environment and other services on top of different uh, cloud providers. You may find in our uh, toolbox, uh, we are using the tools like uh, uh, Terraform and Bosch, and also we, we are using the concourse for continuous integration. The central role here is uh, belongs to infrastructure as a code. It's a method to define infrastructure components and all their requirements in form of code. Uh, it could be a Bosch manifest or Terraform script, for example. So when developer changing the code of some component uh, and uh, commits it to the repository, then the concourse may trigger a Bosch deployment with a specific manifest to do a component update. Because not all cloud providers made the same, hence the challenge is uh, to support all the diversity of cloud technologies and the difference between Bosch CPIs uh, dialects. So when we are deploying a Cloud Foundry environment, we are managing all those differences to provide the same Cloud Foundry experience for customers, regardless of hosted infrastructure. So my story would not be complete without talking about multi-cloud challenge on Azure. So as a support of different Bosch CPI dialects is a general challenge, I would like to talk about other kind of challenge, but of, of the same level. Uh, while the capabilities uh, of uh, cloud providers are mostly similar, often they are organizing the resources and uh, differently in order to provide to, to those capabilities. 
So Excel is a great example of how different cloud providers accomplish the same goals with a different design is availability concept. On most of cloud providers, user, uh, users are ensuring availability by spreading multiple instances of the same VM row across availability zones. In other words, each zone is a represent the, different, the, the distant fault domain. For example, if I, if I have a web service and they would like to have a high availability, so I may to deploy at least one instance at each zone and I have to do it uh, manually. On Azure, in contrast to other cloud providers, users can place multiple instances of the same VM role in availability set and allow the Azure platform to automatically spread them across four domains. The SAP cloud platform abstracts these differences away from you. Okay, so when we started uh, our exploratory of Azure capabilities, we have a concern about ease of operation of uh, multiple storage accounts and about the overall disk performance using uh, classic uh, storage accounts. But everything changed with the managed disk feature release, which is, uh, removes the performance limit boundaries. So our concerns will dissipate after the general availability of the managed disk and the following update of the Bosch CPI that supports this feature. And uh, if uh, I'm talking about uh, Bosch uh, CPI enhancements, it's a good idea to show how the Bosch CPI evolves over the time. Please put attention that most of the major updates were delivered in a short period of time. For a half year, a new Azure functionality support uh, landed into Bosch CPI, like managed disk feature, multiple resource group support, ability to create application uh, gateway, and uh, all other overall improvements uh, towards the developer experience, like better diagnostics uh, or retrieve logic. So I think it uh, was a very fantastic work, and uh, I think it's a perfect end uh, to my story. So thank you. And now Sean will talk about the uh, SAP Cloud Platform and the native Azure integration. <laughs> It's like a performance test for uh, MacBook HDMI connectivity. Okay, so uh, Dimitri talked a little bit about some of the, the challenges that we worked through together to align um, SAP Cloud Platform's multi-cloud architecture with some of the specific uh, design decisions that we've made in Azure um, and how the Cloud Platform ultimately abstracts most of those things away from you so you don't have to worry about those sort of peculiarities of different um, cloud providers. Um, but then there are a number of cases where you actually want to take advantage of some some native capabilities and you, you want to have awareness of the cloud provider that you're running on so that you can actually use some of the differentiated capabilities. Um, and so there's a couple of those uh, that are of interest uh, when it comes to, to Azure. Um, the first is uh, briefly mentioned before the, the service broker concept. This is something that you know, I think everybody in the Cloud Foundry community is very excited about. In fact, is, is growing uh, now beyond Cloud Foundry into uh, Kubernetes through the service catalog work. Um, and so in Azure, we've built the Azure service broker um, that provides uh, access to some of our most popular backend services, as I mentioned before. Um, and so you can deploy that in any Cloud Foundry environment, including the Cloud Platform, and use that as a way to connect your applications, your sort of Cloud Native 12-factor apps running in the Cloud Platform to um, stateful backend services that are running, in this case, in Azure, and I'll show an example of that in a second. Um, the other is Active Directory. Um, so Microsoft has a um, huge amount of uh, assets in the identity space um, with Active Directory on-prem as well as our uh, hosted version uh, in Azure, Azure Active Directory. Um, and so we've done work as part of that um, sort of ongoing work with, uh, with Cloud Foundry to make the Azure Active Directory um, service integrated with Cloud Foundry, which means that you can have your, if you have your identity, your corporate identity already managed in Active Directory and potentially federated into AAD, you can use that as your um, identity 
identity into your Cloud Foundry environment as well. So you don't have to create entirely new developer and operator identities uh, for managing your uh, Cloud Foundry environment. You can use that um, with the Cloud Platform um, as well. And so that's, that's quite powerful because you can then do a single sign-on into all the different um, products that AAD supports, including Office 365, uh, for example. Okay, so let me jump back out of here again um, and do a quick demo of the Azure Service Broker. So again, I'll start in, um, in GitHub because again, this is a similar to the CPI, this is a project that's built um, by Microsoft full-time engineers with contributions to the community. Um, we do it all out in the open uh, in GitHub. Uh, and so you can take a look here in this GitHub project and see the services that we uh, support today. So I think there's like nine um, services that we provide there and we're continuing to add more uh, all the time. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is take advantage of this service broker to actually deploy uh, a backend service uh, in Azure that I can then connect up to um, a, an app that's running in the SAP Cloud Platform. So I'll do this actually through uh, the Azure Cloud Shell, um, which is our in-browser uh, CLI experience. So this is, gives you a fully, um, uh, a full Bash shell actually running uh, inside the browser. Um, and I mentioned, you know, we've done a number of things to, uh, to integrate Azure with, with Cloud Foundry, and one of them is we've actually pre-installed the CF CLI uh, in the Cloud Shell. Uh, so anybody that has an Azure account um, can use this for free. So if you're ever sort of on the go and, and need to access your Cloud Foundry environment, whether it's running in Azure or running somewhere else, if you just need access to the CF CLI uh, in the browser, you can, uh, you can use this. Um, and so, what I'll do is I'm basically, I've already logged into um, my Cloud Platform uh, environment. You see here um, that I'm logged in with my corporate identity, so that's taking advantage of that um, Active Directory uh, integration. Um, and I've already deployed the Azure Service Broker which just gets deployed as a Cloud Foundry application. So you can take that, um, uh, that project that's available in GitHub and deploy it as a, as a CF app into any CF environment. Um, and as a result, if I do CF Marketplace, I can see all of the uh, Azure backing services that are available um, to deploy here alongside some of the ones that are provided natively by uh, the Cloud Platform. So here's um, you know, Cosmos DB and, and Event Hubs and MySQL and so on. Um, and so what I'm gonna do I've got a, um, a simple Node.js application um, that relies on a Redis cache. Um, and so the, the beauty of the service broker is you kind of just, as a developer, you say, I just wanna have a Redis cache from somewhere, I don't really care where it's coming from. In this case, I'll um, use the one that's um, available in Azure. Um, and I, so I can just do CF create service, give it the name of the service, Azure Redis cache, we'll call it CF Summit Demo. Um, whoops, what did I miss here? Oh, the plan name. So I'll use the basic plan, trying to save a few francs. And so what that's, what that's gonna do is actually talk through um, the Service Broker app to start deploying a Redis cache in Azure uh, that I could then bind uh, to my application. Uh, that's gonna take a few minutes uh, that we don't have, so I'll use one that we created, uh, that I created earlier, um, which you can see specified here in the app manifest, um, the CF Redis demo service. So if I just go ahead and push this application, so I'm pushing this app into the Cloud Platform. So it's running in the fully hosted environment provided by um, SAP, but then it's binding to this uh, Redis cache service that I've deployed into um, my Azure subscription. Um, and once that's completed, I will have a, my Node.js application uh, that can talk to um, that, that Redis cache behind the scenes. And there you go, it's all up and running. So if I go ahead and grab this endpoint here and drop that into a new tab. See this app, I'm available for uh, consultation on uh, web design after the talk if, uh, if anybody needs help. Uh, so we'll just say CF Summit, uh, no, let's see, SAP Cloud Platform. Rocks, submit that, and that's going to get stored as a key value pair um, 
in that Redis cache behind the scenes. And as you might expect, I can pull it back. Add platform. as a value, again, pulling it out of that, of that Redis cache. So that allows me to take advantage of some of those native Azure services um, in conjunction with uh, the cloud platform uh, managed by SAP. Okay, so let's uh, start to wrap up. Um, so uh, Cloud Foundry on, on Azure is, again, something that we've been working on for multiple years. We've got multiple uh, different ways that you can interact with it. Um, we think the, the Cloud Platform from SAP um, provides a great way for, uh, for customers who are looking to either integrate with their existing uh, SAP assets or have that sort of fully hosted, fully managed um, service where you don't even have to deal with you know, setting up um, your Bosch director and, and that sort of thing. Um, We've worked really closely with SAP uh, over the last year or so uh, to get the cloud platform up and up and running on, on Azure. And it's been a really great uh, partnership, as Dimitri alluded to. Um, we've had really quick iteration cycles uh, between the co two companies, um, and it's uh, you know we're really. Um, you know, aware of and in sort of invested in this multi-cloud notion. We hear this from a lot of customers, um, and so um, you know, it's, it's not it's not something that we fear to go and have these conversations about how we can enable multi-cloud um, sort of environments like the cloud platform. Um, and as a result, uh, we you know enabled cloud platform as the the first multi-tenant uh, hosted uh, cloud foundry offering um, in Azure. So that's pretty exciting. A uh, bunch of resources here, including some of the things that uh, we pointed to um, through through the session. Uh, so go ahead and, and check those out. And with that, I think we'll open it up for a few minutes of questions. Thanks very much. This is one in the back first. Yep. Pardon me. The resources, sure. You should be able to get this deck afterwards as well, but there you go. Yes, sir. Uh, how about the, the upgrade process? So, like it's managed by the, managed by SAP, but whenever there is a new release, like what is the schedule for the upgrade? Is it like uh, the individual can manage itself on the portal, or like SAP just go and upgrade it? So the the, up, the upgrade of the of Cloud Foundry yeah, basically within the Cloud Platform, platform right? Yeah. So you have a like a version of Cloud Foundry because it's it's open source Cloud Foundry, right? So you have a particular release version and then there is a new release version. Yeah, actually, we are constantly updating the Cloud Foundry versions, and uh -huh. uh, we are doing it in uh, sequence. So actually, from uh, custom, for customers, uh, the transition is. Uh, very transparent, so as a customer, you don't need to care how and when the version is updated because we are doing it very transparently. And I think it's typically like within a couple of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. it's typically within a couple of weeks of yeah, like so sort of an open source we version have being. Yeah, a cycle, but uh, we may talk about it in the offline. Backup and restore of the. Actually, we are working on it. Uh, but, uh, I think it's better to talk offline. And, uh, you can find me at uh, uh, SAP Force, and uh, we can uh, talk about uh, all the, your questions. Okay. okay, thank you. Hi. Yep. Yeah. So, can you really deploy bot on as you don't stop and what you do? Yes. So that was the thing I showed initially, is basically you go to that, the Azure CPI uh, GitHub page, um, or actually the Bosch documentation, and that gives you the, um, I think one of these links will have it, uh, the instructions for deploying basically a Bosch director, so you can use um, a Azure Resource Manager template and just spin up the Azure Virtual Network and a couple of virtual machines, um, storage account, about you know, a dozen resources that get created, um, but then yeah, you can deploy open source Cloud Foundry. Um, 
Yep. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. If you're running, if you want to run Open Source Cloud Foundry, you're running that on directly on Azure IaaS resources that are part of your account, your subscription. Uh, so Cloud Foundry is not built on VM scale sets, uh, Azure VM scale sets, um, because Bosch operates in terms of single VMs. Um, we actually, we did a whole investigation about whether we could enable that, um, but it just doesn't work well with the, the Bosch API. Um, but in general, yeah, the, the, you get the capabilities of, you know, the core Azure IaaS um, in terms of you can choose different VM SKUs and you can set them up for, you know, shutting down and all that kind of stuff. Uh, through Bosch deployments, basically, it's yeah, yeah. That is, it, it's one of the drawbacks, frankly, um, is that we don't have. I mean, Cloud Foundry in general doesn't have a, an auto scaling uh, infrastructure, auto scaling okay. notion, um, which is again, I think, you know, part of the value of using something like SCP is is that it's just sort of auto scales for you. Um, oh, okay. well, Okay. Um, yeah, so thanks everybody for coming. Uh, if you have any questions about Cloud Foundry and Azure, um, I'll be at the Microsoft booth most of the time uh, over the next couple of days. Um, and as Dimitri mentioned, he'll be uh, over at the SAP booth. So thanks everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you.